Hello, welcome to the comprehensive lecture series from Department of Civil Engineering at Christ College of Engineering, Iringalakura. In this series of lectures, I am going to discuss about the previous year questions asked in the GATE and IES exams in Civil Engineering related to the subject of Mechanics of Solids. So, let's begin at the beginning itself. Let's begin from simple stresses and strains. Okay. Let's look at the first question. The first question and its options are given us. Elastic limit is the point. Option A, at which the toughness is maximum. Option B, up to which stress is proportional to strain. At which elongation takes place without application of additional load. Option D, up to which if the load is removed, original volume and shape are Regained. So, from the theory of elastic properties of structures or from the stress strain diagram, we know about so many limits such as the proportional limit, such as the elastic limit, ultimate point, etc. So, we know that elastic limit is the point up to which whenever the load is removed, it will come back to its original position. So, uh, from the options, we can understand that option D is correct. Sometimes you may be confused, you may get confused with the option B, that is up to which stress is proportional to strain. But remember that uh, the point up to which the stress is proportional to strain is called the proportional limit. Okay, so here is the stress strain diagram that I discussed. From here, option A, I mean the point A is the elastic limit, point B is the proportional limit, point C and D are the uh, yield points, option uh, I mean, point E is the ultimate point and option F is the fracture point. Okay, so we can understand that the point uh, B corresponding to elastic limit is the point up to which if the load is removed, original volume of shape are regained. So, option D is the right answer. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Second question. For engineering materials, the Poisson's ratio lies between. So here it is of the range of values that Poisson's ratio can take. Okay, and the options are given as 0 and 1, minus 1 and 1, minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Option D is 0 and 0.5. And we know from the theory of uh, elastic materials that the uh, range of uh, uh, values uh, that Poisson's ratio can take is 0 and 0.5. Okay, so the answer is 0 and 0.5. So before moving on to the next question, let's uh, look at some of the theory of Poisson's ratio. Let's try to understand what Poisson's ratio is. So Poisson's ratio, uh, whenever a material is applied a lot, we know that it uh, it undergoes deformation. It undergoes deformation both in the longitudinal direction as well as the lateral direction. So Poisson's ratio is that quantity which uh, which represents the amount of lateral strain compared to that of the longitudinal strain when the load is applied on the material. So Poisson's ratio is given us as the ratio of lateral strain and longitudinal strain. Okay, so let's look at, uh, so we have already said that uh, the uh, ranging value of Poisson's ratio is 0.5. Let's look at the values of some of the materials. Okay, so the uh, common engineering have given a table of the uh, Poisson's ratio for common engineering materials. You can see that uh, values. Uh, 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 our mostly important metal concrete has a value of 0.15, whereas steel has a value of 0.32 and 0.5 is uh, rubber has a value approximately equal to that of 0.5 which is the highest value and I believe cork, C -O -R -K, cork is a material uh, which has a value of uh, approximately 0. So the value of lateral strain in that material is 0 compared to uh, its longitudinal strain. Okay, now let's look at a question related to the material test. So, if A is the cross section of a bar, the gauge length for the measurement of ductility will be options are 5.65 into A, option B 5.65 into A root A, option C 6.56 root A, option D 6.56 into A. Okay, so from the Indian standard codes, uh, the gauge length is uh, is the length that we use to measure uh, measure the properties, the material properties 
whenever we do tension testing and uh, all such type of material uh, testing uh, experiments and gauge length of uh, a material is given by uh, from the is code it is given by 5.65 into root a so let's look at, look at what gauge length is okay so if you have a standard tensile test specimen having a length say l uh, and it has a, a area of cross section a okay so uh, we cut a special uh, measurement in between the material where the material is fixed and is loaded this length is known as the gauge length and it is given as this l0 in this figure is given as uh, 5.65 into root a where a is the area of cross section of the material okay so this is the statement from the is code or the indian standard code so it is given that the gauge length the gauge length okay you can see it here the gauge length uh, uh, with respect to the cross sectional area s0 it's given s0 here it's given as l0 equal to k root s0 where k is a constant equal to 5.65 so that matches our answer okay let's look at a problematic question okay so i have a question here given that if e elasticity equal to 2.06 into 10 raised to 5 newton per millimeter square an axial pull of 60 kilo newton is applied to a steel rod which has 50 millimeter in diameter and has a length of 4 meter and we are asked to find out the elongation of such a material okay and the options given are 0.595 millimeter 1.19 millimeter 3.19 millimeter and 11.9 millimeter so it's a uh, simple problematic question in simple stress and strain okay so from Hooke's law uh, we can derive uh, the formula to determine the elongation of a material subjected to axial load okay so from the Hooke's law we have uh, stress is proportional to strain we know that the stress is proportional to strain and from uh, this equating this and uh, this uh, equating the formula for stress and uh, strain gives that the deformation of a material is given as pl by ae where p is the axial load l is the length a is the area of cross section and e is the modulus of elasticity of the material so we have delta equal to pl by a okay so from the question we have the value of p as 60 kilo newton we have the value of length as 4 meter we have a uh, we don't have a but we can find out uh, find it out using the diameter 50 millimeter and elasticity a material constant is given as 2.06 into 10 raised to 5 newton per millimeter square so i'm going to uh, apply all these values into this formula after having transformed it into corresponding units so i mean uh, my elasticity is in newton per millimeter square my pull is in 60 kilo newton and length is in 4 meter so i'm going to convert the meters into millimeters and the kilo newtons into newtons okay so that i i get an answer in millimeter so uh, applying it in this formula gives me elongation delta equal to p 60 into 1000 so 60000 newton into 4000 millimeter divided by area that means pi by 4 d square where d is the diameter e elasticity 2.06 into 10 raised to 5 so this all gives me this all calculating gives me the value of uh, delta or the elongation caused in this particular material to be 5.59 millimeter so the answer is option a 0.595 millimeter have another problematic question on Poisson's ratio. A bar of 4 cm diameter is subjected to an axial load of 4 ton. The extension of the bar over a gauge length of 20 cm is 0 0.03 cm. The decrease in diameter is 0 0.0018 cm. We have to find out the Poisson's ratio and the options are 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.33 and 0 0.35. Okay, so from the earlier discussion we know that uh, the poisson ratio of a material is given as lateral strain by longitudinal strain so lateral strain is the change in the lateral direction so if it is a uh, cylindrical bar it, it means the strain along the direction of diameter longitudinal strain means it is the uh, 
it is the uh, strain along the direction of uh, force so uh, in this question it will be the uh, strain or the elongation or the change in uh, uh, dimensions along the length of the along the length of the uh, uh, cylindrical bar okay so let's uh, look at all these cases so to, to find out the lateral strain we know that it is the direction of the diameter so the diameter the original dimension of the diameter is given as 4 cm and the change in that particular uh, direction is or the decrease in diameter is 0 0.0018 cm also uh, to find out the longitudinal strain we have uh, the change or the delta in that direction is 0 .00, 0 0.03 cm and the original dimension in that direction is 20 cm so combining together uh, we can find out that a lateral strain is equal to 0 .00, 0 0.00018 by 4 which is equal to 0 0.00045 and longitudinal strain equal to 0 0.03 by 20 which is equal to 0 0.0015 so since uh, these uh, have the same uh, dimensions this strain is a dimensional quantity okay so dividing them or finding out lateral strain by longitudinal strain gives me the value of mu or the Poisson's ratio to be 0 0.3 and hence our answer is option B 0.3. Now let's consider the various elastic constants uh, like the bulk modulus, elastic modulus and the rigidity modulus. Okay, so in an experiment, the question is, in an experiment, it is found that the bulk modulus of a material is equal to its shear modulus and we are asked to find out the Poisson's ratio and the options are 0 0.125, 0 0.25, 0 0.375 and 0 0.5. Okay, so from the properties of elastic constants, uh, we know that elasticity E modulus of rigidity uh, G, uh, model, uh, bulk modulus K and Poisson ratio mu are the four elastic constants of a uh, material. They are constant and they are related by certain formulas that can be found out as uh, the relation between elasticity modulus of elasticity and rigidity in modulus is given as this e equal to 2g into 1 plus mu where mu uh, is the Poisson ratio similarly uh, uh, elastic modulus and bulk modulus are related by e equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu so equating this gives us uh, the value of Poisson ratio which can be found out the values of elastic mo uh, shear modulus as well as bulk modulus so uh, that gives us a formula that mu equal to 3k minus 2g divided by 2 into g plus 3k where mu is the Poisson ratio k is the bulk modulus and g is the rigidity modulus okay so from our in, in our question it is given that the value of bulk modulus is equal to its shear modulus that means here k is equal to g so equating that uh, equating k equal to g gives us that mu equal to 3k minus 2k divided by 2 into k plus 3k so that uh, calculation gives us mu equal to mu or the Poisson ratio equal to 3k minus 2k is k uh, that's the numerator, uh, numerator. Uh, 2 into k plus 3k is equal to 2 into 4k okay so that is the denominator and k and k get cancelled out and the value of Poisson ratio will be 1 by 8 which is equal to 0 0.125 which is option a look at one final question of uh, question from simple stress and strains uh, given that for an element in a body of homogeneous isotropic material subjected to plane stress ex ey and ez uh, which are normal strains in x y and z directions respectively and mu is the poisson ratio uh, the magnitude of unit volume change of the element is given by so we are asked to find out the volume change so volume change involves the change in uh, change in the material dimensions in all the three directions so we are going to deal with such a situation and the options are given as ex plus ey plus ez option b ex minus ey plus e minus ez option c ex minus mu into ey plus ez option uh, d uh, i mean uh, shown as option a but it's option d uh, ex plus mu into mu uh, EY plus EZ. Okay, so from the properties of elastic constants and from the properties of strains, we have a theory that the total volume change in a material 
when subjected to uh, pressures on all of its side will be equal to the sum of strains in all of its three dimensions that means if a uh, if a material such as this box is uh, which has an initial volume of v1 is subjected to forces from all its directions you can see that there is a force in this is the y direction uh, this is the x direction and this is the is the direction so the forces are acting in all the three directions and it causes a change of volume uh, or that it compresses the material and uh, its volume is reduced to v2 in this form okay so the volumetric strain uh, can be uh, given as uh, the oh, obviously we know the strain is the change in dimensions to the original uh, dimension so the volumetric strain is v1 minus v2 by v1 okay so this unit volume change we have a theory that it is equal to the sum of longitudinal strains in each of the directions so we have the three directions x y and z so uh, so so whenever the force is applied in only one direction we get ex uh, whenever the force is applied in only one in x direction we get ex similarly we get values of ey and ez so the individual sum of this their values contribute to the total change of volume and so from that theory we have the answer is option a ex plus ey plus ez is equal is the uh, volume change in the material subjected to volumetric pressure with that i conclude the lecture for now i hope we have discussed some of the and not even not all if we have discussed some of the major problems that comes from simple stresses and strains we have a lot more ground to cover which we will see in next classes thank you so much